What up? What's going on, guys? Your boy Jez. Welcome back to another Madden 25 franchise gameplay. It's actually been a while since we went ahead and got this uh, franchise moving for you guys. We are in week 12, heading close to the playoffs. As you guys see, man, we are undefeated so far. Going up against the 84 overall Houston Texans. So I'm definitely very, very, very surprised at, you know, that overall. You know, typically when you see drafts, you really don't see too many teams above like 80. So to have them above, you know, to have them at an 84, like, wow, I'm really curious to see who they have on their team. So I'm really excited just to see their lineup and see, you know, the, the type of matchup I'm going to be going up against. And uh, this is my third franchise, you know, uh, if any of you guys have missed them or anything. In year one, we want the Vikings. Year two, we want the Cardinals. Both of them being successful um, Super Bowl winners. Now, uh, I have yet to have an undefeated season, you know, because playing on all Madden can be difficult. You know, uh, they are very psychic, and uh, it is very, very, very tough to stop. This is by far the best defensive team I've had out of the three years. So it makes it a little easier to go on ahead and stop the computer, you know, on drives, which has given me the most trouble due to the fact that, you know, their blocking is superb. You know, their uh, offense can't, it's just tough to stop on all Madden. Uh, but, like I said, our defense is, is very dominant, you know, and the core, the backbone of our defense is our defensive line. You know, when you got J.J. Watt and we got Poe and, and uh, just a lot of block shedding monsters along with Bryant. And just a very good front four that goes on ahead and makes a lot of plays happen. So our first offensive possession, trying to get back in rhythm here with Nick Foles. We went ahead and traded our first, second, and third round pick, I believe, to go on ahead and get him. Uh, we did draft Geno Smith, but by the time I looked at quarterbacks, there was nobody I really wanted to pull. As we ended up just rumbling through folks with LeGarrette Blunt. There was nobody I, I looked forward to having a season with. You know, at the time, so I was like, you know what? Let me just see what I can get for Nick Foles, and I, I, I sent the house for him, and um, I'm very glad with my trade. You know, uh, because he he is a very uh, accurate quarterback. You know, he can't be sporadic at times. Like you're gonna see a throw um, coming up that just made no sense. You know, but for the most part, he puts the ball where it needs to be, and he does a very good job of being able to throw the ball. As we hit him with the skinny, right over the middle of the Butler, right there. Huge gain, puts us in excellent position to go ahead and score. Right there, Blunt close to a touchdown, but he does pick up the first down, putting us in striking distance. Another handoff, and right here, you know what we like to do within the five-yard line. Whoop! Hit him with the play action. Whoop! Hit him right over the outside shoulder, up top in the back of the end zone. Two, of course, nobody other than McCoy. The league, I mean, the, the team leader, I should say, in receptions, yards, and touchdowns, I'm pretty sure. You know, I try my best to give him the ball as much as possible. He has easily risen the most when it comes to uh, attribute-wise and overall-wise. He is just playing out of his mind this season, dominating, uh, you know, the team in catches and, and pretty much every offensive st statistic when it comes to receiving. So I definitely look to try to give him the ball as much as possible. So here we go back again defensively, and as you see, they got a little run game going. And when you got Shady McCoy, he's very, very difficult to try and get a hold on. Very slippery. He can just go on ahead and just... You know, uh, juke his way right through tackles, broken tackles left and right. And, you know, we got to be able to get hits on him early and be able to put him down in that first tackle, which is very difficult on all Madden because Shady will just break tackle. So here's their first opportunity to get on the board, but it's just a bit outside. So right there, we uh, end up getting lucky right there because we uh, hold them to a field goal. But unfortunately for them, they end up missing the field goal, which gives us not only good field position, but more importantly, it allows us to be able to drive downfield. Hopefully, you know, theoretically be able to score and go up two possessions, which is always a, a, a you know, feat that I try to go to. Look at this right here. Look at this all Madden A-gap instantaneously. A sack within a second and a half. I didn't even have time. To do a five-step drop back before I'm, well, back on the ground. Just looking at the dirt. Right there was definitely a, a missed throw right there. I didn't want it so deep towards the back of the end zone. I wanted it to be more down in the way. But the ball kind of carried a little bit longer than I would have liked to. Giving the cornerback enough time to adjust and go for the interception. And that right there was definitely a bad play by us. Allowing them to go on ahead and, uh, you know, get the turnover. Knocking us you know from being able to score at least a field goal that drive so that still puts them 
you know, in the opportunity time. But as you see, they just punted us the ball. So that right there still gives us, as we muffle right there, but do recover, still gives us the opportunity to go up two possessions if we're able to go on ahead and move the ball downfield. So, you know, we have all three of our timeouts, a little less than 30 seconds remaining right here. We drop back, we go over the middle, and it's a quick catch and tackle, so we waste the timeout. Right here, we skip ahead a little bit. We're in scoring position. Here we go to Ned other than my main man, McCoy, for another interception. And that right there brings us into halftime. We are up 14 to 0. And that right there is an excellent way to start the half. Not to mention we do receive ball to start the second half. So that right there gives us as much momentum as we need heading into this drive. Being up 14-0 against a very good team with a very good record. Doing very well this year. As you guys saw, um, I believe the quarterback was Jake Locker. Had pretty good stats. Wasn't he like 15-5 and five or 13-5 and five or something like that? You know, definitely had some good stats. Look at LeGarrette Blunt absolutely running over folks. And that is why I went with that style of runner. There was definitely a lot of agile, quick runners. But I was like, you know, I want a big, powerful back that's going to be able to fall forward, get me necessary yards after contact, and somebody who's just going to be a bruiser, somebody who's going to pound the inside on the defense, and somebody who's just going to make a long day for that front seven, whoever decides to be inside that box. I don't run the ball typically too much, but this game, I found myself going to the run more than usual. You know, I definitely want to say that LeGarrette had an excellent game of just being able to find open holes, but more importantly, he was falling forward every single run, which definitely makes it difficult to take the ball out of his hands if he's being so effective. Right here, we whoop, hit him with the spin move. And I know Nick Foles isn't your typical read option type runner. You definitely want to have somebody with more speed that can break away if they're able to chase after the running back. But I do read options in hopes that they play the QB, leaving the middle wide open for my running back, which will allow me to run up the seams. But unfortunately, they didn't play the running back. They play no, excuse me. They didn't play the quarterback. They played the running back, so I had to force to keep it. Thankfully for us, our number one QB does get injured not that's not thankfully but he does get injured but thankfully for us i should have said um he comes back you know um and he is able to finish the remainder of the game without getting injured so that right there is big with playoff time you know coming up the last thing we need is our starting qb to go on ahead and get hurt for any significant time and i've had that happen in previous seasons and it is very difficult relying on a backup especially since i've gotten used to nick Foles throughout the year excuse me so here we go up 17 to 0 right here Locker just runs for his life, man. The pressure just came right through, and, you know, the coverage, more importantly, was very well. And I'm just running your basic two-man under, you know, with Champ Bailey and Milner and Biggers, and we just got such a dominant defense where it's only a matter of time before them block sheds get to you. So if our man defense is, you know, doing well for the first three or four seconds on the play, that right there might even be too long. But, you know, if our man defense is doing well for the first couple seconds of the drop back, then I feel like eventually a J.J. Wilder, or Poe or Brian or Cody is going to get through. And that's where we resulted in most of our sacks, where previously the years before I was doing a blitz off of the edge and I would go on ahead and lead the league in sacks. For the previous two years, year number one was Daniel Manning with like 20 some odd sacks. Second year was Patrick Willis who led the, the team with I think like 30 sacks or something crazy like that. He had lots and lots of sacks right there. And um, this year is like, you know what, I don't want to do any blitzes. I just want to run stock defenses and see if we can go on ahead and, you know, allow our block shedding to get us some pressure. And that's what's been happening all year long. I'll sit back and dime. Two man under, cover four, any type of soft zone or man to man defense. And as long as our coverage is good, our defensive block shedding will get to you. It's only a matter of time, especially JJ Watt, who leads the NFL in sacks. I don't know exactly how many he has, but his power move is uh, almost had a sack right there. His power move is, I think, is maxed out at 99, maybe 98. His finesse I've brought up from like 78 to all the way up to, I think, 90 ish or something like that. So. He's very difficult to block. If he doesn't bull rush you with his pure strength, if he doesn't just push you and run through you, he has the finesse ability to run around you, use a quick spin move or spin move to go on ahead and get himself free. So that type of dual threat on the defensive line, it's no wonder he's leading the league in sacks. Like I said, as long as our coverage is well, he's going to get through. So 
that's the end of the game, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. We were able to pull out this victory in front of the Houston Texans Stadium, in front of their crowd, being able to not only win, but win in dominating fashion, 24-0, limiting the them, their ability to run the ball. And I know that's a very big part of their offense with Shady McCoy. We had an excellent job of being able to lock him down, forcing them to pass the remainder of the game, and being able to lock that up. So that's the end of the game, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, this is your boy GS. Love each and every single one of you guys. I'm out. Peace.